Okay, Kate, so I'll keep the rest of this uh, really short for you. Um, just again, this is a video about the Crusades and just to give you some framework for putting some of the information together uh, for the fishbowl. Uh, the questions for the fishbowl are also going to be in this presentation. There are um, series of Crusades uh, that do uh, follow the first Crusades. Um, in uh, 1144, there is a Seljuk uh, general uh, who actually captures Edessa, which you can see is like the northernmost of these crusader states. Uh, so one by one, these crusader states kind of get picked on uh, by uh, the Islamic Empire and uh, Christian Western Europeans are going to try to crusade again uh, to, you know, quote unquote, save the crusader states. And largely this will fail. Um, one by one, Christian Europeans are going to lose uh, the crusader states. And just to give you some idea, each of these crusader states ends up being conquered by uh, Western Europeans who are described in the Arab sources as Franks and largely uncivilized because that's how they appear um, to some of the uh, people in the Islamic empire. The um, of type of rule is very, um, you know, kind of detached at first. They garrison themselves off. Um, they largely are living in um, like kind of uh, created fortified spaces, uh, very separate from the communities of people who are living uh, in, you know, Jerusalem or Tripoli or whichever. Um, but over time, there are some interactions and some of the interactions are not necessarily negative. So despite the fact that this is a conquered uh, state, and the brutality of uh, Christian uh, crusades, uh, there is some interaction that's commerce, that's, um, you know, some interaction that is including things like intermarriage, and some of the Europeans will stay in the area of the Middle East, and some will move um, back to Europe, you know, with a whole bunch of new ideas, and uh, arguably the crusades have an effect of being significant for uh, Western Europe, because there's a lot of insights gained, you know, from societies that are largely uh, much more developed than uh, Western Europe was at the time. By the time we get to the Third Crusade, a really significant uh, change up is uh, something that happens in the Islamic Empire. Before uh, the mid 1100s, there was a lot more disunity in the Islamic Empire. So if you think back to the end of the Abbasids, um, there is a huge kind of incursion of Seljuk Turks who are going to take on uh, big roles in the government. There's also a lot of parts of the Abbasid Empire that had fractured off, like discontented people, um, you know, just go their own way and say, forget about uh, being part of the Abbasids. Uh, in some cases, this means um, the uh, individuals who are the, um, uh, uh, um, uh, the, sorry, I lost my train of thought, the individuals who are uh, in the Islamic empire that maybe um, are Shia, the Fatimids, for example, in Egypt, um, they were fighting uh, with some other groups over power in Egypt. By 1187, uh, Saladin, uh, that's how he's referred to in the West, um, he is going to uh, unite large numbers of people uh, underneath him, and he will control uh, Egypt where the Fatimids had power. They were a Shia political system. Uh, Saladin is going to be a Sunni, but he'll kind of put together a coalition of uh, individuals from Damascus, from Baghdad, Egypt, and uh, this large kind Kind of united Islamic empire is going to be very much uh, different for the Christian crusaders to face. Uh, the first crusade that really enables Christians to set up these uh, crusader states in the region, you know, end up being arguably successful because the Islamic empire um, is A, not expecting it, B, um, they are uh, divided. They have other priorities at the time. The Crusaders and the Franks are, you know, least of their concerns. Some of the Arab sources suggest that um, this isn't really a very big deal uh, to the Islamic Empire because it's so, so big. Where the Crusades happen is like a very small part of the empire and they just have a lot of other uh, priorities. But in any case, uh, Saladin uh, gets noted uh, very significantly in a lot of sources on both sides for being very uh, generous, for being noble, uh, for being very giving. Uh, Richard the Lionheart, who's actually like the King of England, um, is going to be involved in this crusade. He does try to take back uh, Jerusalem. There are exchanges between Richard the Lionheart and Saladin, uh, but ultimately uh, the crusaders will turn back and there is a truce that is formed um, the uh, Muslim uh, society will rule Jerusalem and pilgrims are able to visit. So you would think like after the Third Crusade, you know, everything is going to be uh, just fine. 
That's not the case. And the Fourth Crusade is incredibly messy. I'm not going to go into it all here, but it's something to look into. This becomes um, where uh, Western Europeans become very involved in a succession issue uh, in Constantinople and end up really attacking and looting uh, Constantinople. And uh, this crusade leads to worsening tensions uh, between Byzantine and the Western Europeans. Uh, these are the fishbowl questions that you will be uh, talking about in class and um, you will be assigned a group. So you'll be kind of listening sometimes or sometimes being able to talk. OK, uh, to what extent was the cause of the first crusade a religious piety? OK, um, so, you know, maybe there was some degree of religious piety. Uh, maybe it was very uh, much a question of uh, maybe there were other possible causes. Um, the second one is to what extent was the First Crusade fitting as a just war, according to the definition presented by Augustine of Hippo. Um, just war theory exists today in terms of, you know, is there ever a time in, um, uh, you know, society for war to actually uh, occur? And if there are just occasions for war, what are those occasions? And um, even if there is war, what are some of the rules of war? Um, what is uh, just war? And so just war theory is an active area of philosophy. But way back in the time period of the Middle Ages, there's also definitions of just war. Uh, so I'll note the definition for Augustine of Hippo, and I'm actually going to put this um, in writing for the class, so I'll uh, post that for you also. But just so you have an idea, just war is really, um, it has a couple of different pieces, right? Is the cause um, righteous, you know, just? Uh, so we're looking at that being one part. Is the um, uh, kind of uh, response, if it's a response, um, uh, uh, something that's proportional? Um, is there a... Um, uh, a um, aspect of um, just war might be, um, is there not only just cause and whether or not it's um, maybe uh, to what degree it's like self-defense, uh, that might be a part of it. I'll put it in writing so you can see Augustine of Hippo's actual uh, just war. And we can also use, um, there's a Muslim concept also of what is uh, just war. Um, and we'll look at, we'll look at that. To what extent were there differences in the perspectives between Muslim, Christian, and Jewish sources? So uh, that's going to be a key conversation. Um, the uh, source from Ibn al-Athir that's in the McKay text, that's a source that talks about um, the causes of uh, the Crusades. Um, and he uh, has a very different perspective than the causes of the Crusades relating to Pope Urban. Uh, Christian sources, Jewish sources um, also talk about the significance of the first uh, four crusades. And then the last question is a little bit more um, just relevant for you all. Um, how much do you think crusades are an important topic to put in your um, history class, right? If you uh, were going to keep it in or take it out, uh, what would be reasons for that? And um, should high schools ban mascots that reflect the crusades? There's been a movement in this last year, um, some of it because of the current context uh, to remove um, any type of symbolism. And because the um, our school, BCA, has the knight as um, its mascot, uh, this might be of particular interest to you. Okay, so I'll just keep um, a little bit more info uh, in the future about just war. Uh, but today you can use some of the time to watch this video and then also um, ask some questions. I'll be online with you today. My apologies for yesterday. It was totally my fault. Halfway through the class, I was like, oh my gosh, Kate. So Adi actually has a timer on her uh, phone now, and I have a sticky on my laptop with a big Kate on it. So uh, we are uh, in certain to kind of get you involved, especially uh, for tomorrow, which will be the fishbowl, okay? I will uh, talk to you uh, soon, okay? And see you in class.